So for those of you who don't know who Munira Murza is, you guys need to know and it is imperative that you watch this video. Hey guys, it's Murad Murali. Hope you guys are doing well today. If you haven't already, click that button for daily and consistent content. Head over to my Instagram, subscribe to the channel and back at it again with another politics related video. So. For those of you who don't know what is going on, you guys need to know and get to know because this is obviously very important information. But there has been a new number 10 advisor which has been chosen to set up UK Race Inequality and Commission and that lady is Munira Murza and she is the director of this new number 10 policy unit. And this is obviously very serious because of what she stands for as a person doesn't necessarily corroborate for somebody who needs to work on inequality when it comes to the UK and if the two don't corroborate then the outcome won't be as productive or as effective and this is very serious so let's just go back and I want to just let you know what this girl actually stands for. Munira Murza actually believes that institutional racism is a myth. She believes that the press should be free to ridicule Islam. She thinks diversity is divisive. And she also thinks that people should stop pandering to Muslims. These are all articles written by Munira from, 20, from 2006 to 2017. Like there's several of these articles. But we're obviously going to go down and find out you know, what this person, person actually stands for. This is a particular person's tweet. I think it bears repeating that around 90% of British Pakistanis, who, um, which Munir Murza is, voted Labour. Her views are nowhere near mainstream, but yet they put her front and tactic. They put, her, but yet they put her front and centre. Why? Because it's clearly a tactic, a bloody old tactic. Two. I remember reading about how some of the most vocal critics of the suffragettes were women. And of course those women were given huge platforms despite being few. I wonder why. Anyway, I think anyone who follows me knows my views on these current right wing Asians. But I will say this, isn't it funny how whenever they speak about racism it's clearly always about feelings? This is also a tactic because racism is not about feelings, it's about evidence. A brown and black man is over 50% more likely to get a, cust a custodial sentence than a white man for the same crime. Facts. A CV with a Muslim or African name has less than half of the chance of a callback for a job interview. Facts. These is this these, this is factual information. And for Munir Murza to actually believe and see that institutional racism is a myth is ridiculously stupid. But this is why she's placed front and center to echo these kind of thoughts. This is exactly the role of a racial gatekeeper. It allows people who never had any interest in acknowledging system, systematic racism to dismiss anyone critical of inequality apologists as being themselves racist. It's also, it's just very interesting what this person actually even stands for. In 2017, she disputed Davy Lammy's review of racism in the criminal justice system, which highlighted the bias and discrimination faced by Bain people and said it exaggerated the problem of racism, number one. Number two, she criticized Theresa May's race audit in remarking that constant talking about institutional racism and racial bias and unfair treatment is stoking grievance and deterring ethnic minorities from engaging with public services. Basically, stop talking about racism and we'll end it. Ridiculous. Number three, last year she, ended, um, she defended Boris Johnson's racist article that compared Muslim women who wear burqa to letterboxes and bank robbers and argue that Johnson was treating Muslims as equal in that piece. She referred to the burqa as a symbol of gender inequality. The, the burqa is a symbol of gender, oh, wow. But what is everybody doing now all over the world, especially in France? Are they not meant to have, are we, is it not compulsory for us to have face coverings when we leave the house? Is that a sound like, shut up man. Um, we're meant to celebrate the likes of Sajid Javid, Preeti Patel and Munir Murza getting into positions of power simply because of the skin colour and which means representation. But you can't separate the politics from the people and representation does not mean shit if we're not dismantling structural oppression. So no thanks. On the hijab in 2017, Murza stated, I find it bizarre that any woman who lives in the West would choose to hide herself like that without coercion and even more bizarre to claim as an act of feminism. What a lovely bunch of people Boris Johnson has around him. He has selectively put these people around him. On the Windrush scandal, she wrote in a blog post that the real lesson is not one of racism, wow, as in the, the deliberate targeting of ethnic minority groups, rather it is that the process of, of immigration enforcement needs to be improved. Basically like a love child of Sajid Javid, um, Sajid Javid and Priti Patel. This is basically what she is. And this is what, it's, a, it's a, just a tactic. They become racial gatekeepers. You have people, people of color that you can put in the forefront and therefore they, 
become this deflective kind of nature when it comes to actually talking about real issues, thus only enabling them to become even more bigger issues as time progresses and goes on. That is what really is going on. That is the crux of the issue. And it's a very clever tactic that Boris Johnson and his team is using around him. They have um, at least four um, Asian people, four brown people now who are the forefront of this whole situation. Suddenly everything's okay, but no, they're just playing as racial gatekeepers. This is what they're doing. Uh, they're just deflective clowns that only induce these problems, not solving them. The fact that you even think that institutional racism is a myth, when we damn well know you and your parents and your grandparents would have received a brunt of this is just shameful. It's embarrassing. Like, it actually is embarrassing. You claim that people should stop pandering to Muslims, or maybe you should stop pandering to racist white people. Like, well, maybe you should stop pandering to white supremacy. Maybe you should stop pandering to this lack of understanding of what institutional racism is. Maybe you should stop pandering. So, I feel like I had to do a video on this and everything wrong with this clown, because I feel like there's so many of these people now who are gonna keep coming, and we're gonna keep seeing this. Very selectively handed out, selectively chosen for selective agenda, and it's just unfair. Facts are facts are facts. You cannot argue with facts. You cannot sit here and say that institutional racism is a myth. Anybody that's watching this video and thinks that she's right in doing so, you are part of the problem because there, are, there is factual information to prove otherwise. If you ignore facts, that makes you nothing short of ignorant. So let's get it together, guys. Let's get it to together. If you don't know who she is, hopefully this has provided you with some information. I will leave, leave some you know, links in my bio so that you know, we can add that to it for you guys if you guys want to read more about the situation but i feel like politics is important um you know it's part of our lives especially for people in the uk therefore you know i do politic videos on my channel and i feel like i will do even more in the coming time because i feel like you just have to it's important let me know your thoughts i want to come to this stay educated guys subscribe to the channel it's not only about pop culture and reviews of who's this and beef in this and tt it's also about important situations as well subscribe and i'll catch you guys soon for another video